Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, this is Saturday, March 21st, and it's 8.18 p.m. And I'm going to try to pull this all together. Our brother in Christ, Marcus Hamilton, uh, he's been praying a lot and fasting and asking the Lord to speak to him because he's been wanting to hear from the Lord. Well, he didn't hear much, but just like the other day when he heard, all he heard was Jeremiah um, and some reference. And so he asked me, what does this scripture mean? Or, you know, can you help me with this or something? Anyway, I ended up reading 5 and 6, remember? And I did a video and I said, this sounds a whole lot like it could be written for America. Although it was written for Israel. Oh, it was talking about how uh, the daughter of Zion was so beautiful. And they used the word comely. And I looked that up to make sure. Well, I knew it meant ni uh, nice looking. Nice to look at. Because they had, the Bible describes Jesus as one who was not very comely. He was nothing to look at. Okay, so anyway... Moving on, now a few days later, he said, um, Dear sister, I was praying before dinner. He said, I could eat a horse, yet probably because he's fasting, uh, except for dinner. He said, I cried and asked Jesus to talk to me. In my mind, I heard, It is your Lord and Savior speaking. So I said, I want a Bible verse to back it up. And I heard Colossians 7 and 8. Okay, well, it's Colossians 1. I had looked up in Blue Letter Bible after I had um, answered him, deleted it, and then he came back and he said, I told him, this is great news. Wow, awesome. He said, it is great news, but what does it mean <laughs> off the top of your head? The Bible verse. All right, so once again, I had to go back and start reading from the beginning. So now I'm going to read it to you. It's leading to another little Bible lesson. Okay, so um, I had to open my Bible. I wanted to make absolutely certain that the author was Paul. And it was written to the church at Colossae, a city in Asia Minor, and all believers everywhere. Okay, so let me put that big old fat Bible down there and pull up uh, the internet. And now I've got pulled up... Um, Colossians. Now, the verses he got were Colossians 1, uh, what was it, 6 and 7 or 7 and 8 now? 7 and 8, I believe. Yeah, because I put in Colossians 1, 7. To read them by yourself, it says, Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow bond servant who is a faithful servant of Christ on our behalf he also informed us of your love in the spirit so by itself you could say he might have been saying that um the Lord knows that you love him and he and you have love in the spirit. Okay, but I thought I just felt no, there's more to it than that. So I went back, like I said, to the beginning and I'm gonna start reading from verse one. <clears throat> I'm using the NASB again in the blue letterbible.org it's titled 
this first section, thankfulness for spiritual attainments. Let me check my, yeah, my position's good. I hope that's enough light. I only have a couple lights on, but at least they're in front of me. Okay, so here we go. Paul, which means he wrote it, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, or literally through the will of God, and Timothy, who probably actually wrote it. Many don't realize that when Paul, Paul usually, when he says Paul and so-and-so, it means that person most likely did the writing because he had a problem with his eyes. Um, it doesn't say that in the Bible. That must be in some historical book or one of the other books that was removed. But, but that's what my one pastor who was so learned, uh, he never went to seminary. He taught himself and used the Hebrew and the Greek, and he was just so smart. Uh, I believe he's the one that taught us that. Anyway, um, where he says, Timothy, our brother, it says literally the brother. <clears throat> Not sure why he would word it that way, but it was translated that way originally. Timothy, the brother. So Timothy probably wrote it and Paul probably told him what to say. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Colossae, <clears throat> I think that's how you say that, could be Colossae, anyway, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Now remember Paul is talking to a church, a body of believers in this particular city. All right. He said, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints because of the hope, and listen to this, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, and it's literally the heavens, but no, heaven is better. The heavens could mean the heaven where God is, the second heaven where Satan can be until he's thrown out, and then the heavens that we see, which is where the sky is, the blue sky and the clouds and the chemtrails. All right. Excuse me one second. Must be pollen in the air. It's just pollen in the air. Okay. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of truth, comma, the gospel, or of the gospel which has come to you just as in all the world also or it is in the world also it is constantly bearing fruit and increasing even as it has been doing in you also since the day you heard of it and understood the grace of God in truth. See, this isn't just Paul talking to the church in Colossae. This is Jesus Christ 
through his Holy Spirit, using Paul to speak to you. You see? So he's telling you that you have hope laid up for you in heaven because of the love which you have for all the saints. You see, this is another, if you have this love for all the saints, you have hope laid up for you in heaven. You see that? If you only love the people in your immediate church and family and area and not the outside folks that you don't know or you can't prove are homeless or poor or naked or hungry or whatever or you don't even know them or you don't know who needs what, are you praying for them? Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that part of our armor is to always be praying for all the saints. Okay, now many people are praying for all of the lost, and that's admirable. I... Before I move on to the next verses, um, I've been thinking a lot about hell and how I wonder, I've been wondering just how many will end up there? I mean, I know in my heart we serve a very merciful, loving God. But I also know He demands obedience and holiness and righteousness from us. Which is why we have to ask for forgiveness of our sins to keep our slate clean. Every time you get your garment dirty from a sin, you ask forgiveness and it's wiped clean again. You're clean as snow. Okay? What about the people who have been good, but do not believe in repentance. Do you realize how many there are? How many have bought into that lie that we don't have to repent? Anyway, it's really bothering me such a lie from the devil anyway they think they're laying their hope up in heaven nothing unholy will enter into the kingdom of God so pray for everybody you know that no matter how good they are that they come to know that to repent to say, I'm so sorry, God. I know I'm not worthy of your kingdom. Forgive me for my sins. I saw a video earlier that was talking about the coronavirus causing people to get their Bibles out, to see if this is a sign of the end. They're asking questions, they're wondering, and they're searching, and that is a good thing. So I don't care if it's, if it's really a coronavirus or if it's just the H1N1, which I found out. Did I already do a video on that? I'll check and see. If not, I will be. Um, 
no matter what it is, if it's all this overdoing it, if it's a flu, and I don't believe it is, I, I mean, I don't believe it's just the fact that this flu, whatever it is, they want to stop the spread of it. Why haven't they done this before? I don't recall ever when I watch TV. I used to watch Fox a lot, and I don't remember ever hearing them say even as much as, remember those, it's flu season, take those precautions to wash your hands. Nothing. Nothing. Maybe there was after I quit watching TV, but if anybody has remembers seeing any kind of anything about that, you let me know. Okay, I got off a little subject there. I got off track, so let me get back to this. So, people who are following Christ, who have love for all the saints, and were to pray for them, according to Ephesians 6, that's part of our armor, it ends with and pray with pray in the spirit with all manners of prayers and petitions and for all the saints. I know many of you don't pray in tongues, but you need to ask Jesus. You need to fast and cry out to the Lord to be filled so you can have that just let him know you want it that you want to do what he wants all right that's the most important thing is the desire in your heart okay so he said since you since they heard of their faith in this uh, paul heard since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of the truth, the gospel. See, that's part of the gospel, telling people that if you believe in Jesus Christ and obey his commandments, you will lay up for yourself treasure in heaven See, there's clearly more to the gospel than just an ABC. Admit you're a sinner, believe he died, and rose again, and confess your sins. That's not the whole gospel. It's what Jesus did for us. Why did he come? What did he do? What did he teach? What commandments did he leave? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Then a little, uh, a little, a lawyer asked him, well, who is my neighbor? I think it was a lawyer, a man, somebody. And the Lord goes on to tell him about the Good Samaritan. Okay. You can look that up if you don't know that that, um, I don't know if you'd call it a parable. I guess it was a parable. Just type in your favorite search engine, Scripture on the Good Samaritan, and it'll pull it up. All right. All right, so, which, because of the hope laid up for heaven. All right. Of which you previously heard in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you just as in all the world. So the gospel has come to you just as in all the world. Remember, this is God had the Bible preserved, put together. To be sold as one unit so that you could read it 
and hear God or see how God is talking to you. You see that? He is saying the gospel which has come to you, not just the church in Colossae, okay? Just as in all the world also, it is constantly bearing fruit and increasing, even as it has been doing in you. Also, since the day you heard of it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epiphras, our beloved fellow bondservant, who is a faithful servant of Christ on our behalf, and he also informed us of your love in the Spirit. So they must have all received the Holy Spirit. That's how I take it. Your love in the spirit, which is capitalized spirit. Verse 9. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding and this is why we need to pray for each other because when you first start believing and even through your travels down the straight and narrow path Satan is going to come along now and then and try to knock you off so boy he is attacking the saints, trying to wear them down, trying to make them believe. He's trying to probably make you, can anybody testify to this? He's trying to make you believe you're not good enough, or you don't repent right, or that's the lamest prayer I've ever said. See, it'll come to you like you're thinking it. It won't be like, oh, that's the lamest prayer you ever said. Like it's coming from someone else. Satan is smarter than that. He makes it sound like you're thinking it. You say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Get out of here. Get thee behind me and go back to the dry places where you belong. Or demon Lying spirit, get out and go back to the dry places where you belong. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself and over my household. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. You're not welcome here. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yes, than he that is in the world. See, the, any negative thought that tries to interrupt your praying or just maybe you're listening to your praise and worship music and you're humming along to it while you're doing some work, you know. That's a good thing to do. You have to do the work, do the work, but you can listen to something uplifting at the same time. And you may have a thought come in your head like, like, you, you ought to be, yeah, and even read your Bible today. I, or I haven't even read my Bible today. I am such a, I am such a, whatever. Lousy Christian. You say I rebuke that thought. I rebuke that thought right now in Jesus' name. The Lord knows my heart. He knows I love Him, and I spent time with Him this morning. And I am going to read my Word later. And you tell that demon to get lost. In Jesus name and then do it later when you're done with your work all right he's gonna to try to beat us up he's trying to wear us down and make us think we're not good enough so we'll quit all 
All right. So Paul's talking about not ceasing to pray for you. Let us not cease to pray for each other. I mean, you you can't know everybody on YouTube that you're uh, now and then commenting to their comment and who has a channel. You might listen to 50 different channels over a course of a week that you like. So, you, yes, you make it like a blanket prayer, you know. Lord, I wish to keep all the saints in prayer. I ask you to blah, 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 whatever is on your heart for them that at that prayer session, okay? Until you get filled with the Spirit, you just pray in your language. Most of you are English. <laughs> Most, I say, because I do have a few from other places. And welcome to my channel, anyone from other places. Love having you on my channel. Okay, let's move on. I hope you're getting something out of this. If nothing else, to rebuke those negative thoughts and kick the demons to the curb. Alright, so let's pray for each other. Pray for all the saints, basically. Uh, that you may be filled with all the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God so, he wants you to do your good works. Faith without works is dead. Remember that. That's in James. Those show the Lord that you really mean it when you say you love all the saints. You can't just say words and not do anything to prove it. Oh, Lord, how can people not read these words and understand them? It just makes me want to beat my head against the wall. <laughs> not really, but it's like you're talking to a brick wall when you try to tell them these things. No, no, no. Jesus covered it all when he died on the cross and uh, blah, blah. Let me move on. All right, so you're going to do, you're going to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please Him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, which means stay in your word, learn the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all power, according to His glorious might, for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Now, I think that's the last one. No, that's, that's that section. Oh, the next part is really long and I haven't read it. Um, I will try to stop interrupting myself. Let's see, where am I at? All right, I'm at 29. Okay, I'll try to read this a little faster, and I'll try to stop interrupting myself. Except for the right here where it says, The saints giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. I think that must mean it says, Or holy ones in light. Since it's a capital L, I believe they must be already in heaven. The saints that have already made it. Alright, so y you might want to go over this again yourself. This is such a great chapter and Marcus, I'm so glad that the Lord led you to this chapter because I probably haven't read this in years, to be honest. Because I've been concentrating on 
Daniel, Psalms, Revelation, and then I'll get a reference back to here and a reference back to there. So when I do study, I end up maybe just opening the Bible and reading or I just haven't read this chapter in a long time. Anyway, let's move on to this section called the Incomparable Christ. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Hmm. The firstborn of all creation. Now, isn't that interesting? Who is the image of the invisible God? firstborn of all creation makes you wonder was he born he wasn't the firstborn human that's something to think about let me know your opinion on that was he cre was he born in heaven He helped Father create heavens and the earth. For by him, okay, here it says, For by him, or in him, all things were created, both in the heavens, I just said this, and on earth, visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created <coughs> excuse me, through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also head of the body, the church and he is the beginning the firstborn from the dead so that he himself will come to have first place in everything he's called the firstborn from the dead so he is the first person to ever resurrect for it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross, through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven, and although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, and weren't we all before we were born again, unless you were like seven, <laughs> and there are a few people that were, bo were born again when they were young and never have been bad. That is, there are a few people like that. I know of one. Okay, but not many. <laughs> Alright, so, and although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach if indeed you continue in the faith 
firmly established and steadfast and not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, was made a minister. Right there. <laughs> if, indeed, you continue, let us all say, I shall continue in the faith, firmly established and steadfast. I will not move away from the hope of the gospel, which I have heard. Moving on. Excellent. That's Colossians 1, 23, 1, 2, 3. If you want to write that down and put it on a wall somewhere. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I do share on behalf of his body, which is the church, in filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Of this church I was made a minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed on me for your benefit so that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God that is the mystery which has been hidden from the past ages and generations but has now been manifested to his saints, to whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, we are most of us, not all. I might be partly Jewish, but I don't know it. I can't claim it. I consider myself a Gentile. Most of us are. There may be a lot of us that are part Jewish. And it may be that is why... Some of us are part of the 144,000. But I don't want to, I'm not, you know, if God hasn't told you that or led you to believe that, don't worry about it. To whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Why do some think they have to follow all the Old Testament and the New? The Gentiles were not given but like three commandments besides what Jesus talked about. Not to eat things strangled or to drink blood and and abstain from fornication. I'm pretty sure those are the three. They were not told to keep the Sabbath day holy. They were not taught to keep the Jewish festivals. So please don't let anybody lay that guilt trip on you. If you want to, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with it. Just, I would just say for sure to rest one day in seven. That's what the Lord wanted for our health. Okay? We proclaim him admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom so that we may present every man complete in Christ. 
For this purpose also I labor, striving according to his power, which mightily works within me. So, he's just saying he's full of the, uh, power because Christ is in him. And we should always strive to teach every man with all wisdom. How can we teach with all wisdom if we don't yet have it? So what we need to do is to pray for complete infilling of the Holy Spirit. You can get more wisdom in the meanwhile. Pray for more wisdom and understanding of the word and understanding of what you read. Um, just whatever you read, pray about it if you don't understand it. Okay, so you'll get that understanding which will increase your wisdom. See? Okay. So I'm going to, that's the last verse. I know that was a long, long chapter. And I kept interrupting myself, but I had to say some stuff in between. I just felt compelled. And that's usually because the Holy Spirit compels me. I pray that that is true. I pray that that is true. Okay. So I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video and myself and my computer and my internet connection. And I pray over each and every one of you. I plead the blood over you, your devices, and your internet connections so we can stay connected until we're out of here. I don't think it's going to be much longer. I saw a video I have not shared yet that some of you may know about. Presidents, well, I'm going to do a video on it. Stay tuned for that. With that, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Bye for now.